Welcome to another edition of the Corner Booth Podcast here from the landmark Snowden Deli restaurant. Uh, I'm Aaron Rand, along with Bill Brownstein of Gazette, Leslie Chesterman, and our special guest today, Marwa Risky. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And, and before we begin, in case you're wondering, so this is our new uh, fundraising t-shirt for the year. It's I love Quebec because we all love Quebec. Hashtag, and if you can see that part, notwithstanding. <laughs> so for all the politics we have to live through here, it's still a great place. So if you want to get this shirt, by the way, and I know Bill will be talking more about this in the Gazette on the weekend, you go to historicanglos.com, you can buy it. And our shirt supports this year, Moisson Montréal, which of course is so important now and to help Gazette so many Christmas needy Montrealers fund. and the Gazette Christmas Fund. Historicanglos.com, if you want to find out more, you can order directly from there. All right. Marwa Risky, Liberal MA for Saint Laurent, but more importantly, the next leader of the Oh no no, I'm getting to that later. Sorry, sorry. Liberal education critic, and education has been very much front and center for the last few weeks now. So let's start first of all with the tuition hike that the Premier has decided he would like to put into place because he says it will help financially, and I think many of us, and having talked about this before, realize it's more about language than it is about finance. So where do you stand? Where do the Liberal Party stand in this provincially? Uh, right the, the first day when they announced on October 13 that they wanted to rise the tuition fees to $17,000, I was actually with you on CGED and with Greg, my husband, and the Liberal Party for us, it's no. It's a big no, and I will have to explain why. Mrs. Derry, she's the Minister of the Higher Education. Right. It's funny because as a tax law professor uh, from the University of Sherbrooke, I'm expecting that any Minister of Higher Education, when you open your mouth saying something, that she, you have to back it up with data. And we ask her, do you have any studies? And she said, no, I'm like, do you know what's the average of other program outside of Quebec? It's roughly about 17,000. So, as you probably know me, I did my little Excel sheet, and the average is about $9,000. But guess what? You don't have to take my word. This week, what I did, I brought at the National Assembly the report from the financial minister, Eric Girard. Back to back years, he wrote on public uh, report. Uh, that the average tuition fees for Canadian outside of Quebec is the same average of other provinces. He wrote it black and white. So I'm like, okay, so even Eric Gérard knows it's a big lie saying the average is $17,000 and the, right now the average that we're asking Canadians, it's $9,000. It reflects actually the same average of any other pro program in other province. So this is why we're asking Mrs. Derry to stop it. She needs to find some common sense because what she's doing right now is attacking institution. McGill, Concordia, and in the case of Bishop, it's a divesting news. Um, it will definitely close Bishop. Oh. Uh, it, they won't survive. 30% of their students are coming from outside Quebec. Right. No, it's incredible. It's the same Monsieur Girard, by the way, who before all of this went out and said that it's no good that uh, Toronto is becoming richer yeah. than Montreal's, but much better economy than Montreal. We have to do something to pump up Montreal. So uh, this is really going to do a lot to pump up Montreal. And not only that, I mean, it's all a canard, of course, the, this whole business about language being, there's no data about l the French language being threatened on the streets by foreign students. No. And <laughs> yeah. I have to say, there's 32,000 uh, 32, students coming from outside Quebec, and we had last year 11 million tourists visiting Montreal. Right. Should we yes. tell them not to come yeah. over? Well, that's no, the no, message. We tell them that not to speak English right. while they're downtown. Right, right, but what right. kind of that's message is that sending to tourists uh, at the same time? Don't come here. Well, on Monday, uh, protest. I saw like some sign of people saying, well, maybe you should cancel the Grand Prix of Montreal. Like right. there's like too exactly. much English yeah, in Montreal. Yeah. So, and German I, and but, like Italian. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say, what you're saying about Eric Gérard, that was on September 27th right. at the Parim. Right. And he said in French that, oh, this is the first time that the University of Toronto is doing better than yes. McGill. Yes. We should do something. But yeah. that was before the by-election of Jean Talon. And when they lost that by-election, Mr. Legault actually decided that, oh, I have to do something. Right. I'm losing grounds. You, oh, he has 89 MNA, 89. 
And now he said... He's paranoid. I think like he just lost right now all common sense. And he wants... What exactly? Because at the end of the day, all the universities are asking $1.4 billion. He didn't put any more money. And he knows. He knows. He's a, he's a CPA, apparently. But he should know that no one's going to come in Quebec paying $17,000 when they can stay in their home province right. paying about five to $9,000 in the program. And okay. the, the irony is, of course, that half these people come, they want to embrace the French culture. Yes. This is why they're coming yes. here. Otherwise, they would stay in Toronto or Vancouver and or wherever. And also have the Acadians who have right. no program in their province exactly. coming here in Quebec. Yeah. And they need us. Right. And I gave actually an interview on Monday for them because this is devastating news for them. So it's like we're no longer welcome here. I met yeah. Sophia. She's the president of the Student Union of Bishop. She's from Alberta. She came here, she didn't speak a word of French, nothing. Now she's perfectly fluent. Yeah. This has actually come up a lot on social media this week. A lot of people, is, I have a lot of restaurant people on my social media feed, a lot of people saying, I came here, I went to McGill, I now own Olive and Gomondo, I now own all these, these people who came here, who love it here, who stayed here, but also the people who come here, if all of this is passed, what's the feeling that there is a place for them here? I mean, even if they come and study in McGill with higher fees and everything, what is the feeling for them of why they should stay here if they don't already feel... They're being made to feel unwelcome already. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Absolutely. And yet we celebrate our restaurant culture here without fully understanding where it emanates. But we should point out as well, you, you've posted a petition online and it's... Go ahead and explain because it seems to be gaining some steam. So yes, so with the student unions, and I have to say, this petition is not only supported by the English student from Bishop, Concordia, or McGill. It's also supported by Union Québécois, Union des étudiants du Québec. They represent 94,000 students. Most of them are francophone. So right now, after only six days, we have over 6,000 people who signed the petition. And we hope to raise like at least 20,000 more uh, because we want absolutely the government of Mr. Legault, they have to back down. Um, they need to understand that you cannot attack the knowledge because at the end of the day, what they're doing is not only attacking the English institution, it's that attacking the knowledge. You're right. Well, that's a point, right? Because the premier said the excuse, if you will, the condition, French universities are underfunded compared to English universities. The money that they would save by not having to spend on English, they would put into the French system. That math doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> no, two things on that. First, it's funny because the chart that they use, saying that the French universities are underfunding, they put le réseau UQ, so UCAM, UCAR, and Bishop in the same. Oh. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, it's funny, huh? So Bishop is also under funding under your own chart. So that's one thing. But the second thing, they said they're gonna save $100 million from McGill, Concord, and Bishop if the students from outside Quebec are coming, paying $17,000. I'm betting whatever you want, they won't come at $17,000. At the end of the day, they are missing $1.4 billion for the university. Even if they were right, which I argue they, they are not right, they're still missing $1.3 million right. billion right. Dollars every single year. Right. And so far, he didn't announce anything. Right, and the math is that how short-sighted it is. These students not coming here, if they choose not to, will take four or five hundred million dollars out of the economy because Absolutely. they spend when they're here. They, they buy, they invest, they whatever. So the math is, it seems completely flawed. Absolutely, and the data uh, that we have, it's only from 2019. Oh. At that time, uh, roughly it was about 520 million dollars spending by right. Canadian students here in Quebec. My bet is today it's even more. So, and in tax, because as a tax lawyer, I have to also talk about the taxes. Right, right, right. Just for taxes, it's $52 million. That was the data from wow. 2019. But it also will be an advantage to kids who can pay that kind of money and a huge disadvantage to anybody who, so you're, it's advantage for more wealthy well, kids. Well, elite, yeah. For the elite, yeah. and that is so unfair because yeah. anybody, and also Miguel's very hard school to get into. We're just talking about Miguel right now. So, you know, there's a, a standard that's very high, but mm -hmm. kids who won't, the standard will be not only that you get in, but that you can cover these these crazy fees. So it's such a disadvantage of what we consider education in Quebec 
that it should be you yeah. know fair for for all, and it's not. And there's one more thing that people didn't talk much about it. Uh, there was Paul Journet from La Presse. He wrote it in French that that will be like the first time that we're gonna break what we call the reciprocity. Right. Every Quebecer students, they're going outside, studying in UBC, Alberta, or Ontario. They're paying about the same fees, except for Ontario, they're paying about two hundred dollars more. There's some exception for the medical program and the law program, but the other program is about the same price, except for Ontario. $200 more. And now we're going to double the fees in Quebec. Right. I don't think they realize yeah. what they're doing. Oh, maybe they do. Maybe <laughs> the other provinces at some point are going to say, of course. hold on a second. Yeah. If you're charging our student more, maybe we're we should... Charge yours. And we have to keep in mind, they said that, oh, we're taking so many students from Ontario. So I went to check the numbers. We have every year about 6,400 6, students from Quebec going in Ontario studying, and we just have the same amount coming from Ontario studying here in Quebec. So, like my mom says in French, it's kif kif. But <laughs> logic notwithstanding, he'll never backtrack though. He, well, he says he's, he's gonna up talk, against the he's wall. Gonna he's, yeah, he's going to talk. Though, right? Yeah. When? So, no, 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 no. They are, he, yesterday, the premier said he's meeting the university. Yes. Not Mrs. Dehi. Right. The premier is stepping in. You're right. So I think for Bishop, they have no choice. Right. Uh, but it's more than just Bishop. Mm -hmm. He of course. needs to understand that, yes, we can talk about how we can more finance the university, the francophone, but. We don't need to attack Miguel and Bishop and Concordia to do so. But his history is when he's backed up against the wall. He doesn't backtrack. He like he pushes forward. No, not in my files. I can give you some examples. Okay. Maternelle 4 ans. I right. remember uh, at the time, 80% of Quebecers, they were all in for it. And Premier Legault said, this is like the best thing ever. I'm like, it is good. Right. The Liberal Party, we agree with that. But the problem is that we don't have any teachers right now and we don't have any classroom. And it took about four years, maybe too long. Uh, and then they realized that, of course, we were lacking teachers in classroom. Uh, after that, for the troisième year, he did back down. But after the by-election of Jean Talon, he said, oh my God, maybe we need the, the troisième year again. Uh, but I think for this issue, uh, with the number of people gathering um, against the idea to raise uh, the tuition fees to $17,000, um, he will have to back down. And just on Tuesday, in Bishop, they had 600 people uh, gathering uh, in support of Bishop. And there were not only Anglophone, there were a lot of Francophone talking um, on behalf of Bishop, supporting Bishop. Uh, Sébastien Lucet, who's the um, president of the Chambers of Commerce of Sherbrooke, he says this is like very important. And another issue that came up uh, was the sports issue. Uh, Bishop has over 300 right. athletes. Yeah, uh, half of them are coming from the rest yeah. of Canada. It's McGill has the same thing. Uh, so what's going to happen with this team? They're talking about so, cutting down the sports programs. Yeah, yeah, and that will be devastating yeah, no, also be dev for the Quebec students. Right. And speaking of teachers, yes, uh, there's going to be a strike. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is, you, 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 your, your plate is full with uh, education. It is. Um, it's funny because the government had seven billion dollars right. when, when the Liberal Party left office, uh, and today, all the money is gone. Um, remember the checks of five hundred dollars that he gave like to almost everybody. Uh, just that was six point seven billion dollars. And he's thinking about maybe doing that again. He sort of hinted. We're at running it. out of money, uh, and he also said that maybe we're going to have deficit, uh, and today. He has no more money for people who used to call his ange gardien during the pandemic. And they are very upset because they did the work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when we needed the most, they were there frontline, uh, the educator in the CPA, the daycare, uh, of course the nurses, but also the teachers. But he's got half a billion dollars for the Olympic Stadium roof. He oh, has that's, a lot that's of not money. Right that's but not he has also a lot of money for the battery, but we have to keep in mind the best battery that we have is education. And right now, we need to make sure that we can retain them. And the problem that we're facing, 25% of the graduate uh, teacher, they leave their job within oh. the first five years. Why? The answer is in the report of the Vérificatrice Générale du Québec. The uh, General Audit of Quebec wrote in May 
that it can take about seven years before you get a permanent job as a teacher. It doesn't make any sense, especially that in the national convention, uh, it says that you should be permanent within two years. But they give them part-time job. With the economy that we have, with the inflation that we have, who can afford to work part-time? No one. And last year, we, we lost 800 professionals. So, uh, you can talk, uh, like, language therapists, psychologists, what we need the most in education right. also. Um, so they left for the private sector because they didn't have a... You cannot afford to pay your rent, uh, to pay your grocery with part-time job. The Corner Booth Podcast is brought to you in part by the Snowden Delicatessen, where we are. 75 years in business, the home of Montreal's greatest smoked meat, plus Carnotzel, potato latkes, and the famous Snowden Deli party sandwiches. That's the Snowden Delicatessen. All right, I want to transition from what we've covered here to the Provincial Liberal Party. Yes. Your role within the party. Um, we've talked about this before. Um, most recent poll that came out, the Leger poll that showed for the first time ever, Paul St. Pierre Plamondon pulling ahead actually of mm -hmm. Francois Legault. So we're starting to see a bit of a, of a shift. I know the election's still two years away, but the Liberals continue to just what, 12, 13 percent? 15 barely. percent. 15, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Every I, every, every percentage I was thinking you. of Eric, yeah, I was thinking of Eric Duhem. Yes. But so the Liberal Party <laughs> still mired down there. People are wondering what's going on. I know Mark Tanguay, who's the interim leader, has already said he doesn't want the job full time. Your name has come up more than once. You said for now, mm -hmm. you're a new mom, you have a one year old, you're not interested right now. Nope. But you've not shut the door on that. No, because I have my baby number two on its way, maybe. No announcement today. Oh okay. my God. But... We're history. <laughs> so, yes, we want to have another kid. So that's why I cannot run for now. But there's such a void. I, yeah, mean, I, want, I want to go back to for now. Yeah, for now. <laughs> for now. Yes. Meaning in a year, in six no, months, I, I don't in think, two no, years? No, I don't think that can happen for 2026. Uh, I Not in time for the next provincial I don't, election. No, I don't know. That's when your kids are okay. older. And yes, because I have like my little baby boy who just turned one year old. And it's, it's a sacrifice going to Quebec, yeah. leaving my boy at home in Montreal. Right. I'm doing a lot of back and forth. Just last night, like, I don't want to make anyone cry. I know uh, I chose my life. I chose my position. Uh, yeah, but I was. I came back at 11.30 p.m. at home, uh, and I have to start my day like any other Quebecers early in the morning. Uh, but it's a joy to have my little boy with me. Uh, but with another baby, I just know that I will be overwhelmed having a newborn and a toddler, especially when he's going to turn two, I know that's going to be a lot of trouble. So I just decided that for now, I'm just going to focus on my family. And we'll see after that if I can manage having young children and a career in politics. So we can count on you in three years. Yes. I, I like that. Or How about 15 but, but the, years? 15 but years. My point is there is such a void right now. We, you need a leader there because there's time to move, to, to, to make a move. I mean, Monsieur Pratt and the group who came up with a very interesting set of desires and demands for what they wish, English rights being enshrined and all the rest. Now is the time to make a move, no, before you like... Timing is everything. Yes. And in my position right now... But, but just for your party's position as well. Yeah, is it my in party, this... my family comes first. No, I understand, sure. but I'm talking about it in the Liberal Party well, the in The idea, for example, that they're not going to announce a leader, a leader until the yeah. of 2020. Right. Is right. wrong, yes. A lot of people are weighing in on that yes. okay. and saying that's a mistake. You need mistake? somebody who's a leadership well, position. If it's not you, then... Maybe your husband. We need to get to know somebody. <laughs> yeah. Really. I don't know. Man. We'll ask Greg if he wants to run. But um, no, 2025 um, will give us the time to also make sure that people who has a job right now that they don't want to announce themselves right away, um, they can do the the leadership race in 2024. Uh, become a leader in 2025. I still have like an entire year, like to because during the 2024, and anyone who wants to be the leader of the party should have his platform ready. Like yes. you cannot do a race without a platform. Um, people are talking. We need someone char with, with charisma, of course, yes. But first and foremost, make sure that you have a platform that you can explain to people. And I think last election was hard for for us during the campaign uh, because. People were not sure about where we stand on some issues, so we need someone 
who knows exactly what you stand for, with a platform, ready to go, with people with, that people can relate to also. But you know what people will say, that's another year or a year and yeah. a half where the Liberal Party is just floating Flo without anybody having an idea yes. of what their platform is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those situations where it's getting to the point where people look at the Liberal Party provincially and say, Mm -hmm. There's no one. There's there one. No, yeah. this yeah. no, I'm sure we're gonna have a race. But there's and such a hole in the market right now. This is the time to step in. Like the way things, the, the the way things have been polarized, the way they are. I think now is a great time for someone to jump in and like claim some territory. So rather let's than let's say Bill was right. Who is that person? If there was ah, somebody now, well, good question. Yeah. Right. Very well, good apart question. from you. Well, honestly, I don't know because no one actually announced officially themselves. Uh, so we need someone who's ready to work a lot of hours because we need to rebuild the writing association. We need to make sure that we have enough money to campaign. Uh, we need to make sure that he, the person can bring new faces uh, because recruiting was also an issue, we have to be honest. Uh, last election, uh, we started the election, we didn't have all her candidates. So the person who's going to take that job must be fully aware that this is right. a great opportunity, but with a, a lot of work. And to rebuild the party. Yes, rebuild absolutely. But, when but you if you want to be Premier of Quebec, you know what? The best free job to do to do so is to become the leader of the Quebec Liberal Party. Right. Because if you can fix us, what happened with us, with the Reagan Association, uh, with the, the candidates we need, but after that, I'm pr pretty sure you can actually lead the, con the, the, the Quebec. But that poll of leaders at like uh, Monsieur uh, Tongue, what was 9%? Like uh, he, he drew the least number because he's interim. It's almost like a lame duck. And we know he's not going to. Be and we know he's not. So why would anybody like just jump out and support? Uh, he's lame duck almost. But in this Mark end. is doing the job as an interim, which uh, is a very but, but that's, hard one. <laughs> no, but the designation is bad because in terms of the perceptions of people, we, there is no leader, and I think that's so essential well, at a certain time. But I will say something: if we don't have a race, right, it's even worse, in my opinion. We need to have debates. Last time we didn't have any debates, so people didn't have the chance also to hear uh, new proposals, new ideas, nothing. Well, so, so let me ask let me ask that question then. We, it's hard to look into the future, obviously, but it's a lot easier to look into the past. So how did the Provincial Liberal Party get to this point? How did it fall yeah. off a cliff and end up where it is now? Why do you think that happened? Uh, Why did people give up on it? I don't think people gave up on us. I think they were disappointed, mm -hmm. uh, and they wanted to have people who's gonna listen. Uh, we, uh, you know, sometimes you can hear someone, but you don't listen to people. It's like the difference in the verb. So, not only hearing, but listening to people, and then come with solution to real problem that we have. Uh, sometimes I think we were like too, um, like in the abstract, and people could not relate to us. And sometimes we were like two days. Um, after like a news, we should be like more like proactive. And yeah. for the uh, writing association, um, we used to have uh, a lot more people engaged. And when you've been in office for 12 years and a half, you might have to take uh, take, uh, take people complacent. no take people maybe for granted that mm -hmm. they're gonna be there, but. When people started leaving, no one actually raised the issue. And we had a report, it was signed by Jean Turcotte at the time, who said, oh my God, we do have a lot of uh, members who didn't renew their cards. That was the first red flag. Right. But no one listened at that time. That was the time to wake up. Uh, but when you're in power, you think, okay, maybe like there's a change, people are not taking their cards anymore. But yes, people are still taking their cards. And now, are you optimistic for the future? Yes, I am, because uh, we saw the numbers in different writing. Uh, I can think about uh, Madouane uh, Bourassa Sauvé. She has like over, uh, what, about 2,000 members. Same thing for Sona in uh, uh, Sona Lokayen in uh, Chamonix, because we did the uh, meeting. Um, uh, so they were not nominated, so they have a nomination meeting. So they, a lot of people actually okay. were uh, selling cards, getting new members, and they had like to debate uh, to win actually their seat. And that's good actually. 
that's the city, that's local. We know the CAC's never going to win more than a couple of seats in Montreal. What about the regions? That's where the party hurts the most. Yes. How do you change that? First, Eastern Township. We have to go back to Eastern Township, and then we also will go back to the uh, Outaouais. We always used to be very strong over there. We had a strong voice. Um, it's time for us to go back. Uh, we did last week. On Friday, we showed up at Bishop. Within 24 hour warning, we said to the principal of Bishop, we're coming, uh, we're going to do a press conference. And there was a lot of people there and the news coverage was very good. And we were the only party on the ground over there on that issue. Okay. But we have to do it all the time. We cannot take a break. Uh, so that's something that we need to make sure that on every issue that we show up, if we have an issue in Maurice, show up in Maurice. Forget about the National Assembly. I'm sorry, but it's not the 45 minutes, minutes of the question period that's going to help us. The 45 minutes of the question period is important, but it's not the way you can connect with people. You have to get out of the National Assembly, uh, take your car, get there, sign people. And yet, you know what? The student that I met, I'm sure that some of them will be volunteers in the, at the party. I'm pretty sure of that. Okay. Another point is that uh, Quebec Solidaire is slipping. Yes. And if there's never been a better time, probably, to fill that vacuum. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. don't you think? Yes. Uh, for me, there's always a good time to fill the vacuum. But you need to be on top of your game all the time. Right. And you should not be afraid to, to speak up. You should not be afraid to be invited in a show. Uh, and there's like a lot of things that have been done. Uh, in the regions, uh, Quebec Soda is not very high. And André Fortin did like, he, he, people are not hearing him because he's like in more in the radio in the regions talking about the forest and the agricultural world. But he has a good impact in there. But we have to do it more and more again. But we started that work. Okay. And I'm sure it's going to pay off at the end of the road. Marwa, we want to thank you very much for coming, for That's being it. our guest today. Yeah. Uh, we want to thank you as well. <laughs> uh, that wraps up another edition of the Corner Booth Podcast here at the Stone Deli. We'll see you again soon.